In 2022, Burkina Faso experienced its second coup d'etat within a short span of nine months. This time, it was 34-year-old army captain Ibrahim Traoré who seized power, overthrowing Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba, the leader of a coup earlier that year that deposed former President Roque Christian Cabaret. In a televised address justifying his removal of Damiba, Ibrahim Traoré cited the government's failure to effectively address the ongoing insurgency as the main reason. This insurgency has been a persistent problem in Burkina Faso in recent years. Notably, Ibrahim Traoré's ascension to power drew comparisons to national icon Thomas Sankara due to their shared characteristics. Both were captains, assumed leadership at the age of 34, and carried out a coup against a military regime that had itself come to power through force just eight months earlier. Ibrahim Traoré was born in 1988 in Bondakui, situated in the Mohan province of Burkina Faso. He completed his primary education in his hometown and pursued secondary education in Bobo di Ulasso, the country's second largest city. Unlike his predecessor Damiba and many other Burkina Faso officers who joined the military during their teenage years, Ibrahim Traoré had a civilian background before enlisting. He relocated to Agadougou, the capital, to study geology at Joseph Key Zebo University. Reports describe him as shy, reserved, and highly intelligent. Despite being the top student in his class, Ibrahim Traoré decided to join the military instead of continuing his university studies. Thus, in 2009, he enrolled in the Georgia Namono Military Academy in Po, a second-tier institution compared to the esteemed Gadiogo Military Academy, which counts Thomas Sankara and former President Damiba among its alumni. Upon graduating in 2012, Ibrahim Traoré joined the artillery regiment in Kaya, and within two years, he earned a promotion to the rank of lieutenant. His exceptional performance caught the attention of his superiors, leading to his selection for anti-aircraft training in Morocco. Please note that the content provided above is an original composition and does not draw directly from any specific sources or references. Continuing with the story, Ibrahim Traoré's military career took a significant turn in 2014, when he was deployed to Mali as part of the United Nations peacekeeping mission known as MINISMA. This assignment provided Traoré with valuable experience as he confronted jihadist groups and ethnic insurgents operating in Mali. During his time in Mali, Traoré demonstrated bravery in the face of a complex attack by militants in the northern Timbuktu region. This incident, which occurred in 2018, showcased his courage and resilience. In the following year, Traoré took part in a military operation called Operation Otapuanyu, which lasted seven months and focused on Burkina Faso's volatile eastern region. Although the operation was initially hailed as a success, it only led to a temporary retreat of militants from that specific area. Unfortunately, this withdrawal resulted in an upsurge of attacks in other parts of the country. Traoré also served in a detachment stationed in the northern Sahel region specifically at the three-border zone where Mali, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria meet. Operating on the front lines against jihadist groups, he participated in several operations in that region, demonstrating his commitment to the fight against terrorism. According to individuals acquainted with Traoré during that time, he exhibited qualities of leadership, including determination, courage, and a strong bond with his fellow soldiers. In 2020, Traoré's dedication and capabilities were recognized as he was promoted to the rank of captain. However, he and other junior officers couldn't help but notice the shortcomings of their superiors in effectively countering the growing insurgency. Traoré and his fellow officers found themselves in a difficult position. In 2020, there was a critical situation when the town of Barcelogo in central Burkina Faso was on the brink of falling into the hands of the jihadists. Faced with the belief that the highway leading to Barcelogo was mined, Traoré led his men on a daring commando mission through the countryside, 
eventually arriving in time to liberate the town. It is important to note that the rebel insurgency has taken a devastating toll on the people of Burkina Faso. Jihadist-inspired terrorist groups have wreaked havoc, gaining control over vast territories, particularly in the northern regions and rural areas that remain beyond the reach of the central government. The impact of the insurgency is severe, particularly in the Sahel, North, Central North, and East regions of Burkina Faso. By late 2021, a humanitarian crisis was evident in numerous parts of the country, with a quarter of the population facing food insecurity. The violence has led to more than 3,000 deaths by mid-September 2022, a significant increase compared to the previous year. Moreover, approximately 2 million people have been displaced within Burkina Faso. In January 2022, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba staged a military coup, overthrowing the civilian government led by President Christian Cabaret. Damiba established the Patriotic Movement for the Safeguard and Restoration of the MPSR, Movement Patriotique Paul, Le Salud et la Restoration, vowing to combat the jihadist insurgency and facilitate the return of the two million internally displaced people to their homes. Captain Ibrahim Traoré joined the MPSR, Movement for the Protection and Restoration of Burkina Faso, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Damiba, who referred to the group as Damiba's Winter. In March 2022, Traoré received a promotion to become the head of artillery in the Kaya Regiment, located in the central region of the country. Ironically, this decision would ultimately contribute to Damiba's downfall. Despite the change in government, many members of the military saw little improvement. Those stationed in remote areas often experienced delayed or incomplete payment of their salaries. Within Captain Ibrahim, Traoré's regiment, discontent grew, and Traoré himself took on the responsibility of conveying their frustrations by making multiple trips to Ouagadougou to plead their case with President Damiba. As time passed, Dissatisfaction with President Damiba intensified among the troops. They continued to face logistical challenges and suffered significant losses. The soldiers perceived Damiba and his well-protected officers, comfortably situated in their air-conditioned headquarters in the capital, as disconnected from the harsh realities on the ground. Disillusionment with Damiba's government gradually transformed into anger and a determination to seize power seemed to take root among the soldiers. On September 26, 2022, an attack known as the Trigger was carried out by GRD, Group for Resistance and Democracy Forces. They targeted a 150-vehicle convoy transporting food to Jibo, one of the main cities in the war-torn northern region. The subsequent defeat of the army was attributed to Damiba's leadership. A week before the attack, Damiba had led a 17-member delegation to attend a United Nations summit in New York. During the summit, he argued that his government had made progress in the fight against terrorism and appealed for international support. However, this trip was perceived within Burkina Faso as wasteful and a disregard for the dire security situation in the country. In the following days, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, representing the grievances of many disgruntled soldiers, sought to speak with President Damiba in Ouagadougou. However, his request for an audience went unanswered. Faced with what they perceived as contempt, Traoré and other officers from his generation decided to take decisive action. At dawn on September 30, gunshots echoed through the streets of Ouagadougou. The coup plotters had initiated their plan. Later that evening, around 8 p.m. local time, a military figure wearing a bulletproof vest and a red beret, accompanied by hooded and helmeted individuals, appeared on the Burkina Broadcasting Corporation. Regrettably, our shared vision was betrayed by our leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandovo Damiba, in whom we had placed our trust. The deteriorating security situation that justified our actions was overshadowed, and neglected for the sake of personal gain. In a stunning turn of events, a man stepped forward to declare that Captain Ibrahim Traoré had assumed leadership of a coalition of patriotic movements 
aimed at protecting and restoring Burkina Faso, effectively unseating Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba. On October 1, as their coup d'etat seemed to be faltering, Traoré and his fellow officers took to national television, accusing Damiba of seeking refuge in the French military base of Combonsin to plan a counteroffensive. What initially began as a military coup now morphed into a popular uprising, driven by the belief that the country was under threat from an alleged French-backed conspiracy. Overnight, several army units, including the Air Force and Special Forces, pledged their allegiance to Captain Ibrahim Traoré. The following morning, Damiba was compelled to step down as Traoré's camp gained momentum. At a mere 34 years old, Captain Ibrahim Traoré was installed as the transitional president of Burkina Faso. Since Traoré assumed power, tensions with France have escalated, given the history of French colonial rule in Burkina Faso from 1896 to 1960. Following the coup, hundreds of demonstrators in Ouagadougou demanded an end to the French military presence, which had long been a contentious issue in West and Sahelian Africa. In 2023, Burkina Faso issued an ultimatum, giving France one month to withdraw its troops and terminating a military agreement that allowed French forces to combat insurgents on Burkin Bay soil. Burkina Faso cited a desire to defend itself as the reason for the decision. The following month, France and Burkina Faso officially marked the conclusion of French military operations in the West African nation during a ceremonial lowering of the flag at the French Special Forces camp. These events followed discussions between Traoré and Russian President Vladimir Putin during the Russia-Africa summit held in St. Petersburg in July of the same year. Traoré's speech at the Russia-Africa summit garnered praise, with some likening him to the late Birkin Bay leader, Thomas Sankara. Here is an excerpt from his speech. The issue lies in witnessing African heads of state who contribute nothing to the struggling people, singing the same tune as the imperialists who label us as militants. Consequently, they brand us as people who do not respect human rights. African heads of state must cease acting as puppets, dancing to the imperialists' strings. In his address, Traoré strongly criticized African presidents who are content with receiving handouts. The speech continued with Traoré's remarks on President Putin's announcement of free grain shipments to Africa, which he appreciated but also used as a message to African leaders. Traoré emphasized the need for self-sufficiency in food supply and urged African nations to learn from successful examples.